Namaste, everybody. Um, as promised, I'm back with the third eye video. So let's get into it. What is the third eye? The third eye is our ability to see what might be, to see potential. Everyone has access to his or her third eye. For example, when you have a hunch or act on it, you've used your third eye, but that's only the beginning. Your third eye is a sense, one you can develop to be more refined and accurate than just being a hunch. And one of the ways that you can refine your third eye or your pineal gland or the seat of the soul, as it's also known, um, is through meditation and eating the right foods. A lot of people who I've seen their videos and they've talked about third eye consciousness and how to open up your pineal gland. Um, is through eating alkaline foods and drinking alkaline water. Um, and I guess those things, that is an addition to helping to open up the third eye. But um, I think that meditation and meditating on it is definitely key. And the article goes on to read, the third eye is a natural part of every person. So everyone has their third eye, but not everyone has the ability to use their third eye or to open their third eye. There are people on the planet that um, who may never um, fully open their third eye consciousness. And this is um, a part of me. This is something that I want to work on. Um, harder towards which is opening my third eye it, and I feel as though with through uh, some of the dreams that I have I feel as though my third eye is a little more opened than others but um, but there's always room for growth one way to think of it is as a meta organ that consists of your mind and all of your senses working together as a larger, more powerful sensory organ. The third eye is a very clever bit of nature, of natural, excuse me, evolution that allows you to see the patterns in your life. Even more amazing, your third eye can reveal these patterns to you by overlaying this information on top of your other senses. Now, we all know the five senses. Touch, hearing, smell, taste, and seeing. Um, and with the third eye, the third eye helps you to see things that your natural eyes can't see. So, seeing with the third eye. To understand how the third eye works, the article says, let's look at how it's possible to use the third eye to sense and visually interpret energy around us. Now, using your third eye, um, it's not a difficult task to do and it's not hard. You just have to concentrate on it and it's something that you have to want to do. Um, and it's something that you have to be interested in. And some people just are able to do it naturally. Uh, they don't have to work hard at it. They're just born with the ability or the innate ability to use their third eye. And um, when I was growing up, I would hear my grandmother talk about how some babies were born with a veil over their face. And this is a white film that's over the baby's face. And it allows that child, as they grow older, to be able to see and to the spirit realm or into the spirit world. And if you've heard like back in the day, for those of us who grew up with this and for those of us who believe in this, that people can see spirits because I do believe that. And people can communicate with people that are in the spirit world and there's nothing spooky or, or evil about this because it's a natural innate ability to do this. And you know, like there's positives and negatives to everything. But um, sometimes uh, those individuals who are born with veils over their faces can talk to um, deceased relatives or they can see deceased relatives. Uh, they have what they call, um, I forgot the name of it, but they have um, a sense of vision uh, within the spirit realm for those of us 
that believe in that because not everyone believes in this because they think that is voodoo they think it's spooky but for those of you that may come across this video and you don't believe in it i ask that you you know research it before you try to downplay it and say that oh it's evil it's this is that you know and i think that it's imperative that we as african people or people of african descent and Africans themselves go back to ancient practices and learn this stuff because it is important. All right, moving on. So they asked the question within the article, is it possible to really see energy? And the article answers that question with not directly. While our eyes can see the results of energy in action, seeing energy directly is another thing altogether. Our eyes only see what they are designed to see, light. So basically right now we're talking about our physical eyes and the physicality of eyesight. What our third eye does is process information and then overlay that information over our other senses in such a way we can then interpret and interact with energy in a more precise manner. In this way, we can understand where the energy is and we can see it. And that's because you can see it through your third eye, which is located in the middle of your forehead. And it's also known as the pineal gland, also known as the seat of the soul, also known as the... Um, uh, third eye consciousness. Um, and when you say that you can, when it, the article states, you can understand where the energy is and then you can see it and that's through meditation. This makes sense if you think about it. The mind has figured something out and wants to tell us. The easiest way for it to do this is to use what is already what it already has access to, which is our five normal senses. But when we go to sleep and we go into our dream state, I think that that's when our third eye really becomes activated. It's through dreaming and having dreams and through meditation. So if you're like me and you dream often, Certain things that I dream about have a tendency to play out within this reality. So that's why I always pay close attention to my dreams because my dreams tell me a story. My dreams show me things and I see things through dreams. Whereas, like I stated before and as I stated earlier in the video, there are some who can see with their third eye within the spirit realm. I can see with my third eye when dreaming. So that's why my dreams are important to me because, like I stated, certain things happen where my dreams have manifested before. And I'll give you an example. I think I was about seven or eight years old when I had this dream where uh, of a family member that I had never met before because this particular family member passed away before I was born. So, I had a dream about this particular family member, and they were in the living room at the house that I was living in at the time. This is where I had, where the dream took place. So, they were in the living room, and they were sitting in the chair. They didn't talk to me. They didn't say anything to me. They just looked at me and smiled. And so, once I awakened from the dream, I told my grandmother about the dream and what happened, and later on that day, my grandmother found out that one of her brothers had passed away. And my grandmother linked that dream uh, of that deceased relative, which was her aunt uh, and her brother's aunt. It was their aunt that came to me in the dream. And so my grandmother connected that dream that I had with the passing of her brother. And she says that, and she said that I was a pretty good dreamer. Because like a lot of times my dreams, like I said, they manifest within themselves in this reality, in this self. All right, moving on. And so now we're still talking about 
the third eye and the easiest way for the third eye uh, to manifest itself. So we go on and the article says, this can appear as a mystical power being able to see or predict processes, events, potentials which are not physically present, but it's a very real and tangible skill. Because so much depends on your ability to interpret results, there is a lot of room for mistranslation between the facts and what your third eye returns to you. Also, because each of us sees things differently, it can be problematic to share what we see with others. For example, when we hear the word cup, each of us may visualize a completely different cup. What one person will sense is different from another. Now, I want everyone that's watching this video right now to imagine a pencil. Okay, you have, for me, I'm visualizing a yellow pencil with lead and an eraser. Pencil. If you are watching this video right now, and if you kind of get where I'm going with this and you understand it, then cool. Um, if you can visualize this pencil, guess what? You've just used your third eye. Pretty cool, huh? So, yes, yeah, so if you visualize a pencil, you can visualize a book next to the pencil and a red apple on top of the book. If you can see that, You've just used your third eye. You are, you are exercising that third eye consciousness. And that's just only one aspect of it. There are many, many, many aspects of the third eye and what you can see. And I'm still developing that. And I'm still working on that because I know there's so much more that I need to learn and so much more that I need to research. And I know that there are others out there that have done videos on the third eye and they go into detail about explaining about the third eye, what the third eye is, also known as the pineal gland. And it's in the, and it's the shape of a pine cone. So if you can see the shape of a small pine cone, that's the shape of the pineal gland. And it's in the shape of it and it's right here, located right here. And they say that when your third eye begins to open, you can feel like a pressure around this area. Now, a lot of times that could be sinus pressure. So if you suffer from sinus pressure like I do, then that could be a part of it. It could be a part of your sinuses. And for those of you who do not suffer from any sinus problems whatsoever, and you feel as if you've been working on opening your third eye, and you feel that pressure here and around this area, it could be your third eye opening. So also I wanted to put that out there as well. So of course commonalities exist. We are human and our form, our nature helps us or helps to push us towards common baselines of experience. However, the unique the unique nature of each person also ensures that each of us sees the world from a different angle so everybody's not going to see everything that you see just like everybody doesn't agree with everything that I say and everything that I do and I'm not gonna agree with everything that you say or you do so that's that goes hand in hand excuse me And take a sip out of the Bob Marty mug. So, everything is different for everybody because we're seeing things from a different perspective. Opening the third eye is what we're talking about next. Teost and shamanic practices have developed extensive training techniques for using and working with your third eye. It's a real sense, but it's a meta sense, and it must be used and turned. Um, excuse me, it must be used and tuned in order to be developed fully. It isn't something that just works out of the box from birth. 
Now, on that part, I disagree with. Like I stated before, there were, um, and I, ha- I haven't heard about it lately, but especially back during my grandmother's time, there were babies that were born with the third eye, uh, with the uh, veil over their faces, where that, in a sense, they were able to use full sense of their third eye abilities and also which is their third sight they could see with not just their natural eyes but with their third eye as well um so pause for a second okay so i'm back now opening the third eye um a lot of people I've read where they've opened their third eye and a lot of them, some of them actually regretted it because now they're seeing things that, you know, they've never seen before. And I've heard some stories like that, but, um, there's a way to control that as well. So we'll get into that now. All right. A great way to start using and turning, or excuse me, using and tuning this sense is to connect to a power animal or learn shamanic journey journeying a shamanic practitioner can assist you through a power animal retrieval or by guiding you on a shamanic journey now with this information um i think that with this it comes more from a native american perspective in one sense because they do believe in the animals and channeling and powering uh through the animals um and shamans uh, just check out some videos uh featuring credo mutua from uh the zulu tribe he's a zulu shaman and um i like to listen to his videos and everything and he's had some um premonitions if you will uh that have actually come to pass and he talks about those so um and uh david ike interviews him a lot and he's done a lot of uh videos with uh the uh zulu shaman in south africa credo mutua so uh and i kind of listen to him and take his perspective um i don't really go the uh, the the uh, this particular uh, shamanic route, um, because I kind of look at things from an African perspective, and um, so with Credo, uh, there is one video that David Ike did with Credo, uh, where he talked about the stories that were told to him back in um, when he was a little boy about the, um, and uh, this is probably going a little off topic, a little off subject, but that's cool. But he talks about how when he was a little boy, he heard stories of um, extraterrestrials, you know, coming to Earth and communicating with the um, ancient Zulu. So it's 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 amazing. His story is amazing, especially if you're into stuff like that and you like stuff like that. Uh, YouTube or Google uh, Credo Mutua David Ike, and that's I C K E Credo C R E D O Mutua M U T U W A. And um, you can get some information about that um, as well. And if you're interested in this particular uh, article that I am reading from, you can Google this this article and uh, and so much more. But the website, um, uh, what is the website? Uh, do I have it written down? Um, it's not on here but google what is the third eye and i'm quite sure a wealth of information will pull up and um to get that specific link um for you or that specific website i will um type it up in the link below so you can um take a look at that okay and um it goes on to say 
as a Taoist, I have been developing my third eye since I was five years old and had my first vision. When I shared my vision with others, I discovered immediately that most people don't see the world in this fashion. Unfortunately, I was also persecuted by others. Being so young, I quickly learned to keep my ability to myself and explore it silently and patiently on my own terms. And this is the author speaking, of course. Um, it's also, oh, it's only recently that I have opened up to this part of my Taoist practice since it's been, since it's so easily misunderstood and so many misconceptions exist about this ability. So that's another thing that sometimes you have to, that you'll experience or that you'll deal with is naysayers and people who don't believe in this type of information. So, of course, the best thing is is to always find like-minded people or people who are interested in this, um, and you can tell by their energy. I mean, it's really hard for me to explain about energy, but you can kind of sense a vibe about certain individuals and about certain people and whether or not they're going to be opened up to this type of information. And if they are open, then that would be a good... Um, <clears throat> a good source and a good beginning to talk to them about it because when you start seeing visions because when you open your third eye and I guarantee you that you will um, <clears throat> it may seem a little scary at first it may seem a little weird or something that's not natural to you if this is all new to you but if it is a part of your spiritual connection and your spiritual journey I mean you won't feel weird at all because You'll understand it, and you'll know what's going on and what's happening to you. Um, so the particular author, so the author says that they have spent more than forty years exploring the third eye, reviewing materials, and using their background in both Taoism and in the sciences to understand it. During this time, uh, the author developed a way to describe the third eye in terms that are acceptable to most everyone so hence the author is now sharing it in their teachings many people naturally suppress this ability and the reason why they suppress this ability is because society is so has become so taboo against these types of teachings and against these types of abilities and these things because like the majority or the mass masses of people they can't do it. They don't know how to access and open their third eye. So they feel as though, well, you know, you shouldn't be able to do it either. Because they can't do it. They're going to criticize you and ridicule you because you have this special gift that has been opened up to you and you've accepted it. So if you can use your third eye, great, fantastic, continue to do so. For me... Like I said, I see things through dreams, which is also a part of the third eye consciousness and opening up the third eye and also meditating. Um, and I am still working on lines every, well, I can't say every day, but it's something that I think is just a part of you. And when it is time for it to fully manifest itself within you, it will. And if it doesn't, you know, maybe... This isn't this part of you that you need to use at this time. Maybe you have other skills and other talents that you can open up to and that you can uh, work on. Um, but for me, I just feel a connection with the third eye and I feel as though, you know, that's what I am interested in opening up for myself. All right, so as we go on, often, okay, so it says, many people naturally suppress this ability often to prevent others from making fun of them or labeling them as crazy. Um, if I can use my third eye and I can help others and help myself and get things done, you can call me crazy all day long. It is what it is because I just, I just love this type of knowledge and this type of information. So, yeah, you know. You know, and a lot of people, especially younger people, though, and I'll take that as an example. 
Now, for my young heads out there, if you happen to come across this video, uh, remember That's So Raven, the TV show? That's another great example that I could use. Um, she would have visions. So, in a way, she was using her third eye vision to see things. And her visions didn't always play out like they did within the vision in reality. But, nevertheless and nonetheless... They played out. So if you've never seen any episodes of That's So Raven, check that out. Okay, so. Often, well, let's start from the beginning again. Because it sounds weird if I started from where I stopped. <laughs> Many people naturally suppress this ability, often to prevent others from making fun of them or labeling them as crazy. And with enough suppression any ability withers and goes away. You must use your third eye in order to in order for it to work. Also, how you use it shapes what you will be able to sense. For all other for all of these reasons and others, the third eye remains a mysterious ability. Different cultures at uh different cultures use many varied techniques to develop this skill. So another uh good idea um, if you're looking at it from an African perspective, um, like how I like to look at things, it's also a good idea to, to probably uh, look up other cultures other than just um, Taoism, cultural, shamanic, shamanistic cultures, just look up other um, cultures dealing with the third eye because I can guarantee you every culture deals with it. So, different cultures use many many varied techniques to develop this skill. Taoists, for example, are very patient, taking decades to define and refine this ability to help them become a sage seer with the extra information they can see. The nature of the interpretive aspects of this ability means experience helps improve its capabilities and accuracy. As a consequence, it is also it is also it is a slow process to master. So when you're trying to open your third eye, you have to be very very patient because it does take time. Managing and closing the third eye. Okay, so you want to manage your third eye because once you open it. It, how can I say this? Once you, once your third eye is open, you may see a lot of things that you're not ready for, that you're not prepared for, and that you don't want to see. And I can't give you any any examples of that because everyone is different. So everyone's going to have different visions, different sights, just completely different. Because we all are different. And certain things that we see, it pertains specifically to us. So a lesson that we may need to learn, that lesson is for you and you only. And no one else. So your visions and your insight are going to be totally and completely different from, let's say, the next person. Because... Sometimes we don't need the same lessons and we don't always need the same thing that someone else is, someone else needs because we're different individuals. So, like I said, to work on it, to open your third eye, you can use meditation. That is a good way. And if you can, it helps to meditate every day for about 15 minutes. And if you can do longer, that's great because... With me, I'm going to use myself as an example. I meditate, but not as much as I should. So that's something that I need to work on as well. A lot more meditating. Excuse me. And spending time with myself. Now, I hope this information has helped you out um, a little bit. But, of course, when you hear this video, you're going to have to do so much more research. Just like I'm going to have to do. Because I am no expert. I'm not an experienced person in 
third eye consciousness. I just read about it, and I'm just trying to open my third eye as well. So, hopefully, this video have, has helped you, given you some insight, and definitely I'm going to put in the link below the website where I got the information from so you can check it out and you can check out uh, more stuff for yourself. So this is just a brief inter introduction to third eye and the third eye consciousness in the pineal gland and what it's used for. So until next time, namaste and have a wonderful day. Peace.